a power center 9.x follows the client server architecture. We'll have a four client tools uh, in the power center. R stands for a repository manager, D stands for a mapping designer, and W stands for a workflow manager, and M stands for a workflow monitor. Workflow monitor. And uh, between the client and server, it uses the TCP IP to communicate with it. So this is the part which is covered in pink color. This is a server part. Server mainly consists of two types of services, two types of basic core services, which are very helpful in integrating the data. That is, one is a repository service, another is an integration service. So as discussed yesterday, I'm in the repository database, a repository database, uh, informat I mean like uh, Informatica is not a standalone product. Like just by installing Informatica, you cannot right away start integrating the data. Integrating the data. So whenever you are installing the server, you need to first install the one repository database. That repository database can be an Oracle database, or it can be an SQL server database, or it can be a DB2 database. DB2 database. So first you have to install one of these databases and then you have to install the server. So how does how does a repository database plays a role here? How does a repository database plays a role? So when it comes to the repository database, repository database is nothing but the set of metadata tables which helps you to store all your ETL programs, which helps you to store all your ETL programs. So these metadata tables are just like your system tables in SQL Server, or system tables in DB2, or in the Oracle terminology, we call it as a data dictionary. We call it as a data dictionary. So all these metadata tables will be created, which stores the information about your server information and your database information. And at the same time, it will also store all your programmatical related information, and everything will be stored in this repository database. So whenever you are installing the server, first you have to install the repository database and you need to create a user in the database. You need to create a user in the database. While installing Informatica, it will ask you to enter the username and password and uh, that username and password while configuring or installing Informatica, it will create the set of tables. It will create the set of pre-created tables will be there and these tables are responsible for um, these tables are responsible for creating the uh, metadata tables in the repository database. So now your Informatica server is different and your repository database is different. So how are you going to communicate with repository, I mean Informatica to the repository database with the help of a native drivers? Native drivers is nothing but your uh, Oracle calling interface, OCI, or it can use some ODBC drivers also. So ODBC drivers like a platform dependent drivers. So let me just show you how it appears in the um, windows. So when you go for ODBC AD32, you'll have an open database connectivity drivers. So these are the platform dependent drivers. In Windows it will be different, in Unix it will be different, in AIX it will be different. Likewise, you'll have a different drivers. So when you click on this ad, if you see here, um, you have uh, different drivers like data direct drivers for uh, Oracle, data direct for Sybase, data direct for the SQL Server, data direct for Teradata. So you'll have a different different drivers. Uh, you'll you'll have a different drivers which will be available and using these drivers your Informatica will communicate. So if you see whenever you install this Informatica, this automatically install this driver, data direct 6.0, 7 and all those things. These are the uh, Informatica patent drivers, Informatica. So whenever Informatica has to connect to any other database, it uses these it uses these drivers um, and then communicate with a database. It then communicate with a database. So whenever your Informatica server has to communicate, it will use a native drivers or the ODBC drivers. ODBC drivers. So now when it comes to the when it comes to the domain part, a domain is nothing but the server or a group of computers where your Informatica server is installed. So when we talk about a domain, domain is nothing but a group of computers which are connected in a network is called as a domain. I'm going to show you how does a domain looks like and how does a repository service looks like now. 
So when it comes to the repository service, okay. So repository service, what is the use of repository service, which is available, which is available in the server? So this repository service, whenever a developer create a program or whenever developer do some action, this client will send a request to the repository service, and this repository service will receive the request. And this repository service will convert the request into a DML statements. DML statements like insert, update, delete. So whenever you save something, that should get saved onto the repository database. Just like your PLSQL programs, just like your table script, it will get saved onto these metadata tables. So, so what is the use of repository service here? Repository service will save all the ETL program metadata, ETL program metadata into the repository database, repository database. That is the use of repository service. So whenever we have to store the data in the repository tables, the metadata tables, we will use an insert, update, delete statement to do that. And at the same time, repository service will also help you to retrieve the program what is saved in the repository database. Repository service will also help you to retrieve the programs from the repository database. And once you save the program, so the next thing is that you have to execute the program. Execute the program. So how are you going to execute the program what is saved in the repository database? There are two phases. Whenever we write, whenever we write a program, first we'll compile the program, then we'll execute the program. Then we'll execute the program. Now the program is saved onto the repository database, right? Now the program is saved onto the repository database. So integration service, what it does is integration service will read the program, whatever is saved in the repository database with the help of repository service, with the help of repository service and it will move the data from source database to the target database, source database to the target database. Let's say you have a table called as an employee table, which is available in the source system. And I have a table called as a employee underscore stage, which is available in my target system. And that program you have created in the repository database. So your integration service will understand your instructions. Understanding the instructions is nothing but, you know, what is a table, what is a source table, what is a target table, where this, um, and what are the transformations that is being used. All these things, integration service will understand it. And then, based upon the source connection, it will fire a select statement to read the data. So it will fire a select statement to read the data from the source system and transform the data and then load it. So how does the integration service processes the data? Integration service, in the simple terms, it uses, I mean, uh, it moves the data from source database to the target database. How does it move? How, how it will move? So integration service here, what it does is, so it will understand the instruction and it will fire a select statement to the source database. So how do you read the data from the application database by using a select statement? So your integration service will fire a select statement to the source database and it will retrieve the data and it has to transform the data, right? So the transformation, everything will happen in the Informatica internal memory. It will, Informatica will store all the data, whatever is being retrieved from the source database within the Informatica memory or that is called as a cache in the Informatica terms. So it will save in the cache and then it will transform the data. So whatever the transformations that you have kept, it will transform the data and then it will load the data into the target database. So loading the data into target database is nothing but the firing an insert statement. So what and all are the, in the technically if you are speaking, what does an integration service does? Integration service will read the data transform the data and at the same time it will move the data into the target database. So now the question is your source system is different and your target system is different. How does your integration service will communicate with the source system? How does your integration service will communicate with the target system? If you see the arrow mark what is highlighted in orange, orange color here, so if you see this it also uses the ODBC drivers or the native drivers to communicate with the your source system or the target system or the target system. So it uses the ODBC drivers to communicate with the system. So, so the two core services, one is a repository service, helps you to save the ETL program metadata. 
and other is an integration service which helps you to move the data from source database to the target system. And you have an another tool, another uh, Informatica administration console tool which helps you to configure all these things. So whenever you want to configure a repository or whenever you want to configure a integration service, everything, everything can be configured by using the administration console, by using the administration console. So this is, uh, this is the simple uh, brief about uh, Informatica Power Center architecture and I will show you practically how the Informatica administration console look and what are all of the different uh, repository tables gets created while creating a repository, while creating a repository, right. So, so far any questions here please. Okay. So now I will actually uh, try and show you how the administration console looks. So when uh, admin has actually installed uh, Informatica on your systems, so he might have first installed the Oracle database, that is Oracle 10G database or Oracle 11G, anything is fine. And after installing Oracle 10G database, he might have created, if you have followed, he might have created one user, he might have created one user in the Oracle database. So this user will be used to, this user will be used to store all the metadata table information, metadata table information. So let me just try and connect to my database and then show you. So whenever you install Oracle or uh, I mean, sorry, whenever you install Informatica server, it will create two types of tables. One is a domain tables and other is a Informatica repository metadata tables. Informatica repository metadata tables. So these domain tables will be around 170 to 180 tables will get created. These domain tables will store all the domain related information. Domain means like all the about the nodes and about the repository service information, all these things. All the domain information will be stored in these domain tables. And when you talk about the repository metadata tables, this will create the metadata tables which are used to store your repository information. And when you, whenever you create a repository, it will create around 512 to 515 tables these 515 tables will store the all the ETL program information. There are two types of tables. Combinedly 515 plus 170, around 720 metadata tables will get created by the Informatica by default whenever you install it. So under a single domain you can have a multiple repositories. Multiple repositories. Now what has happened is the installation part is already covered by admin. Installation part is already covered by admin. Now we have installed Informatica on all your systems and the domain tables are already created in your systems. Domain tables are already created and even he would have created even the repository also. But now I will explain you how, how many kind of tables will be created in the repository and everything. So now I am logging into the administration console. I am logging into the administration console this part. So this is completely managed by your Informatica administrator. There are two types of roles in any ETL project. One is an ETL developer, another is an ETL administrator or an Informatica administrator. This administration console is completely used by the Informatica admin. We are not going to touch it as a developer if you join a project as a developer. But we are going to understand complete basics how the Informatica administrator and what are the roles and responsibilities of an Informatica administrator, Informatica administrator. So to log into your system also, so when you are logging in, so when you go here, all programs, Informatica 9.0.1, so when you see you will have two things, one is a client, another is a server. So if you have to log into the server, click on server. Now you have Informatica Administrator homepage. If you click on this Informatica Administrator homepage, it will open up in the browser. This is a browser based tool. You don't have any physical client which gets installed in your system which is used to communicate with your Informatica. This is a browser based. You can access from Mozilla. Using this URL, you can access from Mozilla, you can access from Firefox, you can access from Chrome. So, Anyway, it's a browser-based tool. Informatica Administrator is a browser-based tool which 
you can log in and then configure the repository.